referenced the ongoing murder trial um, in, in, involving the Shafia family in Kingston, Ontario, a, a case that will continue next week. Mohammed Shafia, his wife and son, have all pleaded not guilty in the case. Uh, Shani, you question whether or not a, a case such as this is, is actually an honor crime. Why is that? Well, I think, um, Michael, I think there's a number of different variables here. Um, uh, the first uh, sort of uh, factor for me was if it wasn't a known crime, if it was the older daughter that was, in fact, shaming the family through the choices that she was making, why was the, why was the sort of, uh, you know, um, why were all, all three of the daughters killed, for example, and why was the, the, you know, the other woman, in, the older woman as well in the family killed? It, do you know what I mean? If it was an honor killing that was one specific person shaming the family, why sort of eliminate all of the women? So is that traditionally the case then with an honor killing? It's, it's not so much a, a group of people mm -hmm. as it is one an individual, individual being yes. pinpointed Historically, it's for, been one individual that's been pinpointed. For doing a wrong right. in the eyes yes. of the, the accused. Uh, Raj, do you agree with that? No, of course not. I mean, uh, ultimately, uh, an expert was called in the Shafia murder trial. This expert has written hundreds of articles on the topic of uh, honor killings. That expert has written a book on the topic of honor killings. Um, the fact of the matter is that there's no there's no uh, dispute that honor killings occur. There's uh, certain prerequisites to make out a finding of honor killings, but the reality that Ms. Karamali is talking about that somehow that these honor criminal uh, killings are specific or somehow logical, uh, that's not borne out by uh, by by reality. Um, the reality is that. Sometimes women and uh, girls are killed on the basis of rumor alone. Uh, Imam Sohar Hardy, let's, let's bring you into the conversation, sir. So many Canadians have the perception that um, honor killings are rooted in religion, they're rooted in, in culture, and, and brought to Canada by immigrants. From your perception, is that accurate? No, it is, it is absolutely not accurate. Uh, yes, uh, there are practices of honor killing in some of the communities. It's not a widespread problem in the Muslim community as well. It's a very confined, very local problem in South Asia, in the Middle East as well. And Islam condemns these uh, killings because Islam requires to punish a person for, for his or her crime. It should be punished by the government, not by the family member not by the father or the brother. So whoever commits the uh, honors killing, whether they belong to the Muslim community or not, it is wrong. And in Islamic com uh, communities, it has been condemned by all over the world, by Mr. the religious Sir, scholars, Mr. except, Mr. except few people. If, if that's just, the just case, why, why is there a defense to honor killing in Islamic countries. Iran, for example, allows a complete defense to murder if the motivation was honor killing. So if you commit an honor killing in Iran, you get a complete defense. And that's true of other Islamic countries as well. So, you know, you know, this it, is, it, this it, is it, not true. This, this is absolutely shocking. It's shocking. This Let's is put it this not way. true. This anyone, is not true. Anyone, this is absolutely not argues, true. Anyone who argues that honor I'm not killing sure. does not where, exist, where are you? Anyone excuse that me, excuse argues me. that religion or you? culture does not play a foundational role in honor killings, absolutely that person either is religion, has an IQ of room temperature or that person is out of touch with reality, or that person is being disingenuous. Can I interject Mr. here? Mr. Let's, Mr. Let's, Shaman, let's, you, let's you have Shani have a say. Of touch, you, are, you are out of touch with the reality. This is not the law in any country, including Iran, or Saudi Arabia, or Pakistan, well, course, that the family members can kill. I'm not, uh, you you are just picking up things from me. called for its adoption in Canada in 2004. The problem is leadership, leadership like Imam Soharwardi's that calls for Sharia law, which is a regressive philosophy that's a thousand years out of date and treats women like property. You, you are absolutely, you are absolutely lying on the television. I have never asked to be implement, uh, to have a Sharia law implemented in Canada. So you are just fabricating right in front of me, gentlemen. Absolutely, you, you are lying on television. Gentlemen, we do have another guest with us, Shani. You wanted to interject. Yeah. You wanted I, to have, have a say as well. I, I'm, um, I'm not sure, uh, uh, Raj, if, if you understood me correctly. I, I, do, I do understand, I do agree that there are honor killings happening, and some have happened in Canada, for sure. I was just saying that in this particular situation, um, just, just I, I, my, my perception, and this is just my perception, is that this is being disguised as an honor killing. 
I don't believe that it is. It was a true honor killing in that sense. Well, perhaps they should have called you as an expert witness for the defense, Ms. Karmali. And I did read about the uh, lady that you ha that have talked about, the professor that has written the books on honor killings. So I am aware of her work. Thank you. Imam, if honor killings are not rooted in religion, what are the basis then? Where, where do they come from? Good question. It, is, it comes from a very local, male-dominated culture, tribal system. It is the tribal system that goes on in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in India, in some part of the Middle East. So it is not Islam. Actually, they are doing against Islam if they are killing their family members because the person commits sin. Sin it has to be punished by, the, by God or by the government who has the authority to punish for a crime. It is not a family issue. Shani, is it accepted in other countries? Uh, is the honor killing? Uh, you know what? I, I agree. I agree. I see this, what Imam is saying, and I also agree with Raj. I think, I think that Islam does not condone honor killings, okay? Islam as a religion does not condone honor killings. I think it's a mixture of attitudes and beliefs, uh, uh, from, right from the individual, right to the family, to the, to the particular community or cultural society that they live in. So I think that there are entrenched core beliefs that people hold about their family, about how women are viewed, uh, whether women are owned. When we come back, are resources available to help women and children at risk here in Canada? And should the federal government be taking action to combat crimes committed in the name of honour? Tell us what you think by following the contact links at albertaprimetime.com. More with our panel in 60 seconds. I think the communities themselves have a role in doing that as well as the families. I think it's up to the government to step in and, and actually have a law to cover this. You know, those honour killings are atrocious. That community, that culture, because they're going to know their culture, they're going to be able to speak to their own people. I feel like our laws should be prohibiting such thing. Uh, I think it's up to the, the justice system. It's definitely the courts that would, that would have to take action there. So some thoughts there from Albertans on who is responsible for preventing crimes committed in the name of family honour. Shani, as a, a social worker, you counsel families of ethnic minority. Uh, they often belong to um, cultural communities that have internal structure, uh, social welfare boards, education boards, immigration board. Um, are the right resources in place to, to pr protect, to assist women and, and children who may be at risk? I think, you know, again, it depends on different communities. Like I said, I think different communities have different infrastructures set up. There is also certainly the provincial and federal resources available for women and, and girls or young women. Um, I think it's deeper than that, Michael. I think that uh, until we can change this attitude, until we can change this belief, uh, you know, about women and, and uh, children, that uh, it doesn't matter how many resources you put in place, there has to be that openness to be able to acknowledge that there's a problem and, you know, and not kind of cover it in the name of, uh, you know, pretending to be cross-culturally sensitive or things like that. Do you, do you encounter in your practice um, people at risk because of this? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And what I try to do is try to bridge the, the gap. So, you know, if parents want one particular thing for their children or for their daughters in, in, you know, in this case, and the daughters want one thing, what we try to do is work on something that's acceptable to both of them, something that the parent can live with and can accept and doesn't cause them uh, discomfort or shame or embarrassment, you know, to their community, and also for the daughters to feel like they can uh, continue living a Canadian life, quote, without feeling like they're putting their family at risk or, or shaming their family. Uh, Imam Sowar Hardy, uh, you along with other Muslim clerics uh, across Canada coordinated sermons uh, one Friday back in, in December where you denounced domestic violence. Why do you feel some, uh, some Canadians feel that, that, that killing in the name of honour is worth it? Yes, I mean, as, as the imam across this country, we came together and we provided uh, not only guidance, but also the speeches and the sermons in, in, in mosques across the country were on the domestic violence because of the attention that the Shafia trial is getting across this country and uh, across North America. And I think it is, it is, it is our responsibility as, as religious leaders 
as Canadians that we should educate our uh, community members and, and, and the rest of the Canadians that Islam has no place for honor killing, no place for domestic violence, and Islam condemns, Islam sees these as crimes, not even just something can be tolerated. It is intolerable in Islam, and that's what we did across this country. And uh, we are reaching out to other people, as well as the new uh, immigrants to Canada within our resources, that when we come to Canada, we have to understand that this is a country where Islam is not a dominant religion, where the Muslim community is a very small minority. We have to, the laws that we must follow, and those are the Canadian laws. Islamic laws are not implemented in Canada. If somebody wants to practice Islam, this is his or her personal uh, behavior, but it has to be within the laws of Canada. And in Canada, domestic violence is a crime, and we all need to understand, and we should all know it. Uh, Raj Sharma, is, is this an, an issue for immigration policy? It, is, it absolutely is. Uh, Doug Saunders has written a great book on this called uh, Rival City, and, and it talks about how these individuals uh, come from rural areas to Canada, and, and that may be an issue. And I've talked about the importation of, of these uh, conflicts from their home countries as well. I mean, ultimately, um, we've got to understand something is that if Mr. Shafia had committed this crime in, in, in a number of Islamic countries, I am certain that he would not be prosecuted, and in fact, he would have an absolute defense to it. So we've, there is a change of, there's, as Ms. Karamali said, there's got to be a change of attitude. There's different attitudes, and immigrants have to adjust. And, and I think that the Muslim diaspora in, in Canada is ill-served by spokespeople like Imam Sohar Wardi, who even denies the the role that religion plays and culture plays in honor uh, killings. When you say that an honor killing is has, is just a crime, then you're diminishing it, and and that's an utter utter lack of leadership that crime, we see. It is a crime. And that's in how the, we've got in the, to address this. Mr. Sharma, it is a crime in the eyes of Islam. It is crime in our culture. It is crime in our religion. These honor killing, these domestic violence, is not a uh, is is not a widespread issue even in the Muslim community. It is a definitely it an issue. It happens once certain, a day in Pakistan, is, is it, sir. Uh, there's excuse an honor me. killing every single day in Pakistan. It excuse is me, I am from Pakistan, and I know better than it, you are, I, I, you I am from originally from Pakistan. Excuse me, I am originally from Pakistan. I was born and raised in Pakistan, I'm but, but you are exaggerating. You are exaggerating these numbers. This is not true. But does, I'm not saying this does not happen. It does happen. It does happen in a part of Sindh province. It does happen in the Punjab province. It does happen in certain parts of uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan border. So I'm not saying it does not happen. Gentlemen. But it's not a widespread problem. My it requires our uh, dedication to reach out to those people who are not well educated, and we need to educate it them. And that's what we should problem, do, rather than finger pointing and it. blaming each other. That's not the Canadian way. We so, should help So, gentlemen, each other let's let's wind this down problem. this conversation. Uh, I, 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 and and Shani, Shani we're, we're going to give you last last okay. word on this. Right, we're right. almost we're almost out of time. Okay. For Canada to grow, Canada needs needs immigration. How how do we move past? this? Well, I think, you know, a couple of things. I think um, that other countries, other less developed countries, third world countries, often look to countries like Canada to set the, to set the, um, to set the tone, right? To set the, the, the guideline, if you will. And, you know, if it is still happening, if these honor killings are still happening on a daily basis or very frequently in Pakistan or different countries, then I think Canada has a responsibility, uh, you know, to, to uh, provide some guidance and some leadership uh, to, to other countries in terms of how uh, she, I'm using Canada as a woman, in terms of how she chooses to deal with this, right? I, I'm afraid to say we've, we've run out of time. Thank you for bringing Alberta Voices to this, this uh, widespread You're discussion. Welcome. Much appreciated. Thank you for having me. Shani Karmali is a registered social worker with the Alberta College of Social Workers. Imam Syed Sowar Hardy founded the Islamic Supreme Council of Canada. And uh, Raj Sharma is an immigration lawyer with the Calgary firm Stuart Sharma Harshani Barristers and Solicitors.